It's been two decades in the making. The Movement Revisited, a musical portrait of four icons. Composed by bassist Christian McBride, it pays tribute to four civil rights icons, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Rosa Parks, and Muhammad Ali. Here's a behind the scenes look at some of the narrators included in this musical salute. total of 15 years of doing concerts here and there, I finally get to come into the recording studio and really record it the right way in, in a controlled setting and uh, really do it the way it's supposed to be done. I'm more than thrilled. You know, the opportunities that young black children have because of all of the blood that was shed, you know, I was made very aware of that as a kid. I'm so deeply moved that our dear brother, Kristen, would do this piece. Because as you say, many people are, in a sense, ignoring that history and her history that is so important. Uh, how does it feel to play Malcolm X? Intimidating, quite frankly. I no longer subscribe to sweeping indictments of any race. It's wonderful, it's poetic, it's beautiful. I mean, it's, it's really a pleasure to be able to do it that I wish nothing but freedom, justice, and equality, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all people. In collaborating with him on this piece since 1998, it was always exciting to ride the wave of his excitement, which in turn would get me very excited about uh, what he was doing. You know, the movement revisited is about the people. And I think the vocals really bring it to the people and bring it at a community level. The civil rights movement was a movement of people, all kinds of people, who got up and, and stood up. And all of those voices are a reminder of that standing up and that collective voice. I'm glad to be a part of it. I'm glad that I'm able to represent the musical experience of this time. The movement revisits. It is our pleasure to welcome six-time Grammy award-winning bassist, composer, Christian McBride. So what an nice honor. to meet you. I'm, you know, it's, it's such an honor to sit with you. What, because I'm an old woman on TV yeah. for a long time? And <laughs> <laughs> well, you are an institution. That doesn't mean old. That you just means important. Are, uh, whatever you say. We are so <laughs> excited about having you here because you really are an extraordinary museum. Thank a muse you. musician. <laughs> now, um, now who's old? And yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So. We're gonna get serious here. Okay. <laughs> you have actually worked on this piece for a long time. Explain to me how that happened. You originally started working on it in 1998, yes, is that correct? correct? Yeah, I got a commission from the uh, Portland Art Society. They asked me to write a piece for uh, some Black History Month programming they were doing. Uh, but the only stipulation of the commission was that it had to involve a choir. Okay. And I thought, well, I don't know anything about <laughs> arranging for choirs or working with voices. Uh, so then I was introduced to J.D. Steele, who is, uh, for me, he's the, uh, the secret weapon in this piece. He said, listen, whatever, you can have the smallest idea, just hum it to me, mm -hmm. and I'll get it to the choir, and I'll make something happen. Yeah, I saw some of the performances. He's yeah. amazing. Oh, he's, he's, he's the best. And so when I was thinking of what to write, you know, I thought, do I write about a person? Do I write about an event? Uh, what do I write about? And so... Uh, after thinking long and hard about it, I picked these four people because they really meant something to me growing up as a kid in Philadelphia. Yeah. So I just, I wrote a musical portrait of uh, those four icons. And then you, you've extended it yes. with Barack Obama. Yes, okay. so in 2008, uh, the Movement Revisited uh, premiered, well, the, I call it the new and improved version <laughs> of the Movement Revisited. Uh, premiered in the summer of 2008 in L.A. And just a few months later, Barack Obama was elected president of the United States. Shortly thereafter, uh, I was invited to perform the movement Revisited in Detroit. And uh, the director of the festival asked would I be interested in, in extending the piece. Uh, she didn't exactly say for Obama, but I kind of gathered that's feeling. what they were getting at. <laughs> and at the time, he had only been sitting president for maybe three months. I said, well, feels a little premature to write a piece for him in the context of those four icons. But his being elected, to me, felt like 
the apotheosis of the work of the civil rights movement. Yeah, it was the culmination That's of right. all those people. And so the fifth and final movement is called Apotheosis, November 4th, 2008. Okay. Yeah. It, and it, it is magnificent, and I think made even more so. I mean, the music is wonderful, but the uh, the narrators that you've chosen, uh, Sonia Sanchez, yes. Vondi Curtis Hall, yes. Wendell Pierce is Martin Luther King when you yeah, right. when you That's listen right. to him. Exactly. Um, and, and the last De Dion Graham. Dion yes. Graham. It's just yes. absolutely because they are mesmerizing. Yes, they are. Um, the, the words are mesmerizing, but their uh, rendition of these these speeches and yeah. um, it's interesting listening to the Muhammad Ali. It just made look. I wasn't. I was a real small kid when he was <laughs> at the height of his right. powers, I guess. Yeah. But I'd never really listened to. Um, um, his speeches, yeah. I think, well, yeah. and um, I just thought it was amazing. Well, you know, when I was, uh, same thing, when I was a kid, I knew Muhammad Ali as, as a fighter. Mm -hmm. And as I got older and I started to realize uh, how important he was to the social climate of the 60s and 70s, yes. Uh, that just made me admire him even more. Yeah, and yeah, in a way that I think a lot of people didn't even really think about right. during that period of time. Right. They just sort of thought of him as a boxer and, you know, a good-looking uh, mouthy boxer. <laughs> right. But what he was saying and doing was so much more. He was, very, he was a very smart and courageous man. And how do you want uh, people to respond to this? What are you hoping? Well, you know, I... It, it, People ask, you know, what do you want people to get from this? I, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't want to tell people what I want them to feel. Whatever they feel is what they feel. But okay. at the very least, I hope they get curious and, and go back and say, well, let me do some more research on Rosa Parks, Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, and, and Martin Luther King and, and find out some stories for themselves. Yeah, so, and, and want to go back. That's and, right. And look, let's be clear. This is not just a, we're ta not talking about you on the stage with a couple of people. We are talking oh, about a huge orchestra and choir. Yeah. I mean, this is really a performance. Which is why we don't get to perform it live that often mm -hmm. because there's a lot of bodies on stage. You know, yeah. it's, it's my big band, which is 17 pieces mm -hmm. uh, of the four narrators. Uh, we have timpani and auxiliary percussion and Often the choirs have been as big as 30 to 40 people, so the stage is crowded. Yeah, but it's also, it's got to be fun. Oh, it's a lot of fun. And yeah. the, 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 the feeling and emotion that comes through everyone when we perform the piece, it's, uh, it's undeniable. Okay. What is it about the bass that really speaks to you as a hmm. musician? Well, I was surrounded by bass because both mm. my father and my great uncle are bass players. So you had no choice. I really had no choice. <laughs> but you play a little bit of everything, don't you? Uh, see, I made the mistake of... <laughs> I was at this jam session recently and I played the drums and, and somebody videotaped it and put it up on Instagram. Uh, for better or for worse, it's the single most popular <laughs> Instagram post I've ever made. Really? I'm like, I don't, I, I, just, I was just fooling around. I don't really play the drums. And then I, I, a few weeks before that, I made a video of myself playing the organ. And so I, I, I need to stop doing that because oh. I don't want people to start thinking. You are very talented and you are just really underselling yourself. No, but I'm, I'm just a bass player. Yeah, I'm going to earn you some more <laughs> points at home. Okay. Um, this, your love of jazz and, and uh, the importance of bringing it, uh, you know, to, to everybody, to audiences, yeah. especially yeah. the youth. Your wife has an organization, Jazz House Kids. That's right. Um, because I know the future of jazz is really important yeah. to both of you. Yeah. My, my incredible wife, Melissa Walker, started Jazz House Kids in uh, 2002 mm -hmm. uh, as a result of doing a number of workshops around Newark. And uh, she had the foresight to, to see that a lot of these public schools were getting rid of their music programs. So she started a program where these kids now could come and play in ensembles, take private lessons, have uh, experience mentorship. And uh, it's now uh, culminated in our Montclair Jazz Festival, which mm -hmm. happens every August. Yeah. So uh, I'm very proud of, of what Melissa has done with, with Jazz House Kids and, and the whole community. Before I let you go, where can, I'll send people to christianmcbride.com. Yes. Because I guess we'd find out, yes. you know, but where can we see this 
beautiful movement performed. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could tell you the next time we have a performance. Okay. Uh, we are. But in you can the, get the music. Yeah, you can okay. you can buy the CD mm -hmm. wherever you buy CDs. Yeah, <laughs> I know these days, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess Amazon is the default. Yeah, place. and that and at Christian ChristianMcBride.com, we can find out where you're going to be performing all the time. And, yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Pleasure to have you on this Pleasure's afternoon. Pleasure's all mine. Really. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Up next, the gifted local artist who is telling powerful stories of African-American heroes through sculpture. Stay with us.